Hey, Ronnie Dale, Four Wheeling Australia. I'm in the Adelaide Hills at Jacob Farm for another modified episode. This one with the owner of Whistler Wines, 79 series on Instagram. So if you are on Instagram, you've probably seen, you've probably seen Josh's rig. So why not get Josh in? <laughs> Hi Josh. G'day Ronnie. How are you? Good mate, how are you? Good. Good. Good night around the fire last night, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a ripper. It's a good spot here. 79 series dual cab. This is one of the last pre-DPF. Yeah, it was May 2016, so the very last of the pre-DPFs. Nice. And you're set up for touring? Yeah, set up for touring, and we basically choose a destination, set up a base camp, disconnect the camper, and go away. I noticed you avoided the jacking off the camper part. <laughs> Sorry, I had to bring that up. <laughs> when you take the camper off, it's a bit of a toy. Yep. And you can do tracks like we're going to do here today. Yeah, it makes the car a lot more capable. And you can keep your base camp. That's yep. pretty cool. Yeah. So it's like a trailer, but it's on the back of your tray. Exactly. Awesome. Saves me towing as well, so. Good stuff. I think we'll get straight into it. Bar work, bash plates, all that other stuff. I recognise this bar. It's a opposite lock, 63 mil. Got the idea from you. Like the look of it. And at the time, they were one of the few doing 63 mil tubing. So it was the only one at the time. Yeah, wasn't okay. It? Now TJM and ARB do 63 mil, but I still like the fact that this is all open. I wanted to be able to put these lights here. So Let's go into your winch. So it's, uh, it's an Iron Man 12,000 pound Dyneema rope. It's got a little antenna that plugs in here, so it's wireless, remote, you can also have the cable as well, just in case if your batteries run flat or whatever in your remote. So when you use a winch, you normally use a wireless or you? Yeah, definitely. And you've obviously used it a, a bit? Pulling out trees mainly. Okay. Like around the property at home and uh, recovered myself once. Got stuck between a rock at this end and a rock at that end and just so how, how many, a little tow, but... How many Nissans and Jeeps have you re recovered? None, honestly. Okay, we'll leave that bit out there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bash plate wise, we have... I got that from opposite lock. Um, it's an alley bash plate, but it's nice and solid. It's like seven mil. I don't know the brand, but it comes from opposite lock. We just slightly modified it to fit in the dual recovery points. Where did you get the dual recovery points from? Uh, they're opposite lock as well. Oh yeah? Yeah. And they came red? Yep, they're rated. Nice. I like having two, it's a pretty heavy vehicle obviously. Brush rails, side steps, they're all opposite lock as well. I haven't um, modified any of that. You I, haven't uh, You haven't dented them yet? No, it's, you know, we, we don't do heaps of gnarly stuff, so it's mainly touring. And when we do do gnarly stuff, I'm pretty cautious. Yeah. Not a cheap vehicle to go no, it throwing isn't. around. So. No. Roof rack and jack off camper. Sorry. <laughs> lift off camper, we'll call it. So, this is where you can lift it off with the legs? Yep. Two Which, legs either side. You have a roof rack here and a roof rack there, and they're both rhino racks. Both rhino pioneer platforms. Yep. What do you mainly put on this one? So I've got two um, cargo cases basically that I can put up there for big trips. So um, like when we did Fraser Island for a month, we put two space case cargo cases up there and all the bedding and clothing and light stuff goes up the top. You just came back from there, didn't you? Yeah, that was in July. A month long trip on Fraser. Yeah, we cool. got five month old. Yeah, nice. Good fun. Yeah. <laughs> Tested him out. Yeah, we'll test him out. Four max tracks, shovel, What's on the other side? Is it an awning? Yeah, the awning is mounted to the rear rack. Oh, back on. Yep. But it comes <clears throat> past the rear, or the front rack, I should say. Oh, it's a Fox Wing. Correct, yeah. 270. What tent is that? That's a, a Darche Panorama 2 with the annex. Down nice. the bottom, you can zip on, or you can have it set up like I did last night, just with the, the rooftop. I noticed you had a sheet coming down. Is that with the tent or, I mean, with the awning? That's one of the walls with the awning. I've got two of those walls as well, so you can have them straight out to create more shade or you can have them as a wind barrier. Oh, cool. Lots and communications. Communications first. 
you guys know what you're doing over here in South Australia. We've done a few modifiers on this property and most of the vehicles that we've looked at have the UHF antenna on the roof. I got that idea from you. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, and probably a lot of these boys did. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Have you had it on the bar before? No, That's I went a, straight up there. Is that a two or three? Uh, it's two. How do you go on the highway and stuff like that? That's fine. I mean, most of the time we're either on our own or in a small convoy, so distance-wise it'll go three, four kilometres on the flats and it's mm. good in obviously hilly conditions yeah, yeah. like this. Very hilly here. Yeah. This is obviously for your boombox? Yeah, that's AM FM whip. That's the second one. I broke a GME um, version when a duck flew into it. <laughs> a so, duck flew into it? Yeah. Just snapped it. Wow. Clean snapped it. So that's the second one. Just a cheapie from Super Cheap Auto. Sand flag, obviously. Yeah, it's quick disconnect for sand flag. Let's go into your lights then. Let's start from the top and work our way down. That's a combo, that one, or? Uh, yes, it is. It's a spot spread combo, 40 inch light force, dual row. How many watts? Oh, good question. It's massive. I can't remember though. We'll, we'll put it on the screen. Yeah. I can't be bothered counting and calculating. No, that's right. We got those work lights on the side of the racks as well. What are they? Um, they're Rock 40s, Light Force. What are they like? I never tried them. They're really, really good. I mean, they're probably overkill for um, camping. Mm. At night time, they'll light up like 100 metres yeah, right. in a flood beam. I've got some of those Ultra Flood 20s down yeah, here. Yeah, the 20s, Rock yeah. 20s. The same ones I've got, eh? Yeah. So the, I've only uh, just got them, though. Are I've, these the Ultra? Yes. These under the lights, do these make much of a difference? Yeah, they're really good. Um, if I had my time again, I'd probably do a spread beam. These are a spot beam. And as they're angled here, the idea is to spot roos coming from, you know, just off the verge of the road, um, coming towards you sort of thing. So, but with the spot beam, it's quite a concentrated ball of light. I would have preferred a bit more spread. So if I had my time again, I'd do the 10 inch spread, um, spread beam. A fog light replacement basically. Okay. LED, they're out of control bright though. Like you can't run them. You can't run them in fog, can you? Not in fog, no. It's funny how they do like a LED fog light, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it I, a white light. I, I was asking for an LED light because all the other lights are either HID or LED, so I like that white light. But in fog, not But good. fog, it, it's no good really. Even as daytime running lights are pretty bright, you'll get the occasional person flash in, <laughs> you know. You don't really want that. I've got these. I'm curious to know what you think about these. I'd say if you're going to get anything, I'd just get these. Two in one, you know, you've got the HID, which gives you over a kilometre of light, which is ample. Mm. And then the LED ring, which you get 150, 200 metres of spread. So a great combo. Um, you know, if you're going to get a, a set of HID pencil beams and a LED light bar or something, you'd be paying the equivalent amount of money pretty much. So yeah, that's a good keeps point, them actually. nice and neat. Light Force Rock 9s is my reverse lights. A lot of flush mount ones. Little flush ones. And a single row Light Force 30 inch spread spot combo. Your headlights? So these are a full replacement. Lens comes out. These are called Mix HID Retrofits on okay. Facebook. Do they have daytime running as well? Or? They've got Parkers. These are called the angel eye versions. You've got the parker around the outside and your indicators also around the outside. So it'll flash amber um, as your indicator. Oh, from in here? Yep. Cool. So those um, amber lights on the outside are actually redundant. They don't do anything. They're just there to look factory, basically. Tires lift, we'll start with tires. Now, I've just noticed that there's different tires on the front to the rear. These are new? Yeah, these are about 10,000 Ks old. And how old are they? So I bought the Mickey's all six um, originally with the car and the car's done 65,000 Ks. Oh, nice, still young. Still a baby, barely run in. How many Ks have you done on the back tires or the, the Mickey's? overall because you had them on the whole car obviously before yeah originally i had you know the four on the running tires i ran those for about fifty-five thousand k's 
and then pulled them off with say 30, 40 percent tread mm -hmm. so that I could sell those. I then put the new ones that were still on the spares on onto the, the rear and then I just bought two new uh, Toyo Open Country RTs. So. Do you find that on this vehicle the rear will wear down before the front? Yeah, absolutely, especially if you're carrying the load with mm. the canopy on. But I'd say 70% of the time I have the canopy off and I'm just running as a tray top. Ah, so you would normally lift this off at the back and yep. at home yep. and it just, just comes out when you're camping and stuff. Exactly. Nice. All right, so how do you rate the Mickey Thompson Bajas? Bajas, sorry, Bajas. So they're the um, MTZ P3s, so mud terrains. They've been fantastic. I can't fault them. I've never had a puncture. I nearly came off the bead once, but honestly, they've been fantastic. Road noise, they, they do get noisy after, you know, 25, 30,000 Ks, but they're muddy, so. You've only just had those for 10,000, yeah, you said? 10,000 Ks, roughly. Uh, so not enough to talk about them yet, then? No. We'll wait till you get a full set. Yep. All right, so on the back. Uh, now, for those who, who don't know, um, the 70 series Land Cruisers, the Troopies, the uh, Wagon, single cab, dual cab, all come with a narrow axle on the back because they allow for a wider axle for the V8 on the front. You're running a negative 50, 55, 55 yeah. offset, same rims that I used to have? King rims, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yep. And how you find that so far? I haven't had any issues at all. I mean, bearing wise, um, it's been fine. They just do it every time it's due for Bearing okay. replacement or check. Your, your spares, are you running a negative 55 and a zero? Different offsets, yeah, two different you are? offsets. Okay. Correct, yep. 315, 75, R16 equates to around about 35 inch tyre. Let's talk about your suspension. So, in the rear, I'm running Nitro Charger Sports with 300 kilo constant load leaf springs and airbags to assist when I have the canopy on. When I have the canopy off, it doesn't ride like a pig, basically. <laughs> so, yeah, the airbags, I drop down to 10 PSI um, when I have the canopy off, and the 300 kilos is a nice sort of compromise where it can handle the weight when it's got the canopy on with the airbags to assist it. You're happy with that? Yeah, runs? I've had it in since I bought the car, and I'm really happy with it. What about the front? The front's got... Again, two inch um, old man emu, constant load springs, heavy duty springs, but BP51s in the front. I was advised by old man emu actually, it wasn't necessary to run the BPs in the rear with the airbags. It wouldn't allow for the shock to perform as it should. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, so instead of spending an extra <clears throat> you know, mm. thousand bucks on the rear, I just put the Nitro Charger Sports in there and BP51s in the front. So basically you spoke to an honest salesman. Yeah, I was really happy that they actually advised me yeah. on that. They could have made more money by selling me the more expensive ones, but mm. they've been bulletproof. The V8 turbo diesel. I'm curious to know if you have gas straps. He does, he does. One of the best mods I reckon you can do for very little money. And BT cruiser struts, perfect. And I haven't done it yet. Do they go in factory holes? No. Oh, you pop river that one. Yeah, you gotta drill holes in your bonnet, which is one downside, but look at the accessibility. It's up higher, isn't it? Yep, sits higher. Nice, yep. right, I'm gonna have to get onto that. Yep. It's like the Ram mount, I've been talking about it for years and I finally <laughs> got one and yeah, I've got to do this. Two batteries. Yes. That's the main. This is the auxiliary. Yep. Do you have one more in the back? I do. Okay, so what does this one do? So this runs all the front gear, UHF, center console, center fridge, uh, camp lights, all of the stuff that you'd use if you're parked up. All the stuff that's attached to the vehicle, but the fur battery does everything in the camper? Correct, yeah. Uh -huh. Cool. So that's a pretty good way to separate, isn't it? Runs the stereo as well. Ah. So when you separate the back camper, all you do is one Anderson. One Anderson plug and you 
ready to roll. Nice. Have you done any engine work? No. No, it's all factory. Replaced the air intake with a Safari sealed unit, mm -hmm. ram head. Apart from that, exhaust upgrade. What exhaust are you running? Uh, I've just swapped over to a Legend X three and a half inch stainless steel straight through. Um, Toyota filter? It. Yep, factory filter, diff breathers. Four of those. Are you looking at tuning at all? Yeah, I've got a um, throttle controller on, looking at doing a full remap on it. I was thinking about a uni chip, um, but honestly, at this point, it does everything that I need it to. Mm -hmm. I'll probably do it one day, but not just yet. There's a Red Arc battery isolator. The next thing I want to do in here is a second fuel filter and an oil catch can. I haven't done that yet. Hoping to do more outback sort of stuff. I guess that's you know where you want that second fuel filter, just to have that reassurance, I guess, that the engine's protected from any dodgy fuel. Yeah, that's a good idea. These motors are pretty sensitive. I've upgraded the clutch in there recently as well to a MPC 1300 newton meter clutch and billet flywheel. PDP sorted me out there, so that was good. Oh yeah? Got the last one in the country. Oh really? <laughs> Thanks Travis. <laughs> they had the last one? Yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. they were struggling for parts, yeah. MPC apparently, so. I should just tell Travis you to bring it over for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's an extra, what, 40 kilos? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>We're now onto the main feature of the vehicle. Yeah, I guess this is what sets it apart from most. So, yeah. There's a lot going on in here. Yeah, now, a bit. I've been around this vehicle for three days now, and I have purposely not looked in here. It's been torture, hasn't it? I, it has. <laughs> I want to see it now. Just so, you know, I'm generally surprised when, when I see things. So I try not to look at vehicles before we actually shoot them. So here we go. Cool. That way. That way. Yep. Fridge, drawer. Does that slide as well? Yep. Take us through. Left to right, eh? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. So I guess the main feature of the left hand side is the power board. Got the Red Arc BCDC 1225 there. Is that enough solar as well? Or? Yeah, solar yeah. compatible. That Anderson plug here is where the solar input is. Okay. And then all your 12 volt outputs. Uh, you've got. What's this thing? Uh, that's the switch for the lights. Four wheel drive super center cheapies. They're fully dimmable. Oh, nice. So you can have it however light or dark you want it. Right down to tap it once to turn it off, tap it once to turn it on. USB plugs here. Yeah, Biscus plenty of USB. Hatchet. Yep. And a little saw, hand saw. I also carry a chainsaw, which is around the other side. Cool. Little portable bow speaker. Box. Yep. What size is that fridge? It's 45 litre ARB fridge freezer. It's the next size up, the MSA drop slide. Yeah. This just helps, you can get in, see everything, so cool. that's, yeah, nice and accessible. Travel buddy, I know these very well. Yeah, so that's the latest addition. Do you like it? I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, Ellen, oh, Ellen bought it for me yeah. for Father's Day, so I've only just had a mate of mine, Matt, made up this little tray and just had that installed, so yeah. Do you know why I don't have one? Because Torbs and Wayne have one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a good bit of kit, yeah. It is. No, they're awesome. Yeah. But you do eat a bit unhealthy with them because you got the easy stuff. Yeah. But it's good stuff. So this is one of the latest inclusions, I guess. I've always been hesitant, I suppose, to put drawers in here. But like the idea of this one, it's off the shelf from BCF, I think it was, and under 300 bucks for 800 or 900 mil wow. depth. Pull it out. Uh, it's got three slides, so the main drawer, obviously. So there's all your camping. All the kitchen, camping, and... you know, salt and pepper and cooking, food, coffee, billies, all of that stuff. Nice. 
gets in there nice and easy. It's got this cool little pull-out table. Oh, that's neat. So making sandwiches or whatever on the roadside, you're in the shade. Yeah. That's, you know, nice little feature. And then the whole top pulls out as well. So cool. got the Weber Q and a little drifter bag there. So Ah, oh, I see where you put your barbecue. Yep. Cool. One of the barbecues. One of them? Yeah. I, I got, see you got a Coleman on the other side. Yeah, I've got one of the Gladiator Hyperflames. Yeah. Mm. What's this thing up here? Uh, saddlebags, they carry tent pegs, straps, guy ropes, the jack handles go in the other side, so just the storage. Jack handles as in? For the legs. The lift off. Yeah. See a battery from this side? Other side? Mainly storage, tools, solar, gas burner. Uh, sorry, beads. gas bottle, heat beads, charcoal, Clothing. clothes, sleeping bag. That's the annex for the rooftop tent. So that yep. sits in there. Fire extinguisher behind that chainsaw. Uh, third battery. Third battery and an inverter. What size is your inverter? <laughs> 3,000 watt. 3,000 watt? Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> it's a cheapie though, so it's not... Okay. Not that efficient, and it's only a 100 amp hour battery, so it's not. Yeah, you, you know, never get a full use out exactly. of it. Exactly. I think yeah. you need three batteries to get a full use oh, out of 3,000. Yeah. What size have we got here? 17. What's that for? That's for the bolts for the canopy. Ah, okay. Is it easy to line up when you take it on and off? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, Luke did an awesome job lining it up, it sits flush in line with the headboard, in line with the body of the car as well. So these leg holes here sit exactly flush with the edge of the tray. So nice. you just watch your mirrors go in low range first or reverse sort of thing. Line it up with the tray? Yeah, just line it up. Beautiful. And you can move it on the legs, it wobbles. So you can push it to one side if you need to. Uh, just to get the bolt in? Yeah. But the bolt hole's bigger as well, so at the top here, and then the actual nut is countersunk into the tray. And so you've only so got the, the bolt and the thread, um, and the nut is actually countersunk into the tray. What's in these toolboxes? Uh, so that side's the diesel filler neck and storage, basically. I've got a tarp in there at the moment. Normally carry a few rags in there. Yep. Around the other side, I keep all my tie-down straps and jumper leads. There's a 55 litre water tank which is filled from here. Um, so we just use that really for washing dishes. Water tank is underneath the tray then? Yeah, like so that in the sits middle, in the middle at the front. And then there's a Over the axle. trundle drawer um, behind that with all the recovery gear in it. Yep. So which way do I twist? Inwards? Outwards? There we go. Recovery gear, right? Yeah, recovery gear. So it's not the best access because of the ladder, but um, you know, for recovery gear, you can grab everything you need, yep. yeah, in and out. Different spares and bits and pieces that don't matter if they get a bit dirty and dusty or whatnot or rattle around. So yeah, pretty straightforward, but a good you know use mm. of space, I guess. That's yeah, cool. and recovery gear, all the shackles and stuff like that are pretty heavy, so it's good to have them low down. And it sucks when you're stuck in a again. big puddle and you... <laughs> oh yeah, you can't get to it. <laughs> but that's where you got a winch, I guess, as well. You can use that if you can. So. There's your water tap. Yeah, so there's a switch just up there. Oh, so it's, is it's, it gravity as well? No, it's powerful though when you turn it on. Whoa. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Very nice. Yeah. I oh, there's your light bar. Yeah, light bar, um, camera, reverse camera hooked up to the head unit. That's really handy. On the right here, that's where the airbag um, input is as well. So you've got it tucked away nicely there so you can just pump them up. Is the ladder that I climb up to set up the rooftop tent or to load stuff onto the front rack. So it works well. This was a design that Luke came up with at Outback Customs. And this is actually the second tray and canopy that's been on the car. 
The first one was the first one that they ever built. I loved this ladder setup. I use this bottom bit here to walk around as I'm setting up the rooftop tent and it also helps to support the weight of the spare tyres so yeah. Yeah, it doesn't put as much strain on the back of the canopy. Cab interior. You have a custom console. Cruiser consoles. Um, pretty new addition as well. Previously had a pretty agricultural setup with just a bit of MDF board um, cut and the factory centre console sitting in front of it. That did the job for a couple of years, but this is so neat and tidy here. It's yeah, a lot better power supply as well. And there's four USB outports, two 12 volt plugs as well. It's made specifically for this Waco 11 litre fridge freezer. So it has to be the Waco with this yep. particular one? Permanently wired up though, so it's constant power. So you can run the fridge the whole time or you can charge your phone the whole time, regardless of having your keys in or whatever. So it's hardwired to the second battery. So if you're not using the car for a while, just turn the fridge off here then? Yep. Alpine stereo. It does the job at higher output than the factory one. Hooks up to the reverse camera. Got six and a half inch splits in the doors, front doors, and a nine inch um, sub behind the passenger seat there. Hema HN7. Yep. Yeah, I, I love that. I've got a few friends with the HX1, but I prefer this. Roof console. Outback and um, interior accessories or whatever they are. Single radio. Yeah, GME TX3350. So it's got all the controls on the handheld. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's nice. That's pretty easy. Convenient rather than yep. changing it there. Ah, that's the. The ladies might want to know where to get happy. these mirrors from. eBay, seven bucks. Seven buck eBay. Yeah. Keeps Ellen very happy. So. Yep. <laughs> Pillipods, EGT, boost gauge down the bottom. Scan gauge two, what do you normally have on it? So you're running volts, cold water temp. Is that average kilometers? That's average fuel use and liters per hundred, like current liters per hundred sort of thing. Do you find it's accurate for that? No. Yeah, that's why I don't run it on mine. Volts and water temp are the two main things, I guess, that I want to keep an eye on. Water mm. temp in particular, because the old factory gauge doesn't move. I like the stubby holder. Yeah. Really cool. Thanks, mate. <laughs> what is this? That's a battery link? Yep. And compressor. compressor. Where's your compressor? Uh, it's behind the rear seat. Along ah, with on the, the wall. Yep, along nice. with the high lift jack. Fits nice. It's got a tyre pressure monitoring tyre hook, which runs off the phone as well. So that's pretty cool. You can just um, link up and it tells you your tyre pressures and tyre temperatures as well. So that runs off of Wi-Fi. Q&A. And the benefits of shooting with a winemaker. <laughs> what have we got here? Cheers, mate. Cheers. This is our Grenache. It's called Get In My Belly. Get In My Belly. Get In My Belly. You know, the last three days I've been converted to red wine now. I never used to like red wine. That's good. But now oh, I love it. Mmm. <laughs> First question. Why a 79 dual cab? My best mate. Uh, Macca passed away when he was 28, so this was a dream car of his. Before he passed away, he said to me, I don't live life with any regrets, just take every day, make the most of it, I guess. So I bit the bullet. Obviously, it's not the cheapest car to buy and build up, but thought, bugger it, put together my dream list and went for it. Nice. Yeah. Oh, cheers to Macca. Yeah, cheers. What's your favourite part about this vehicle? Oh, definitely the tray and canopy. I put six months of uh, thought and research into 
the build, I guess, and really wanted to have that versatility of a tray top ute for work <clears throat> and for, I guess, weight reduction, but then have the camper set up so we could just, I can leave the canopy set up with the tent and awning um, on the legs and drive away and come back to camp and everything's set, ready to go. So you can get straight into cooking dinner or relaxing rather than taking an hour or two to set up again each day. Awesome. Yeah. I like the fact that, um, yeah, it's so easy to, to take off. And so you can go camping heavy loaded and then you can still drive around, well, on these tracks here or daily driver, take, yeah, take like, the load off. You can go. What's Anywhere. It, do you notice the fuel difference with it on and off? Absolutely, yeah. How many litres per hundred, you reckon, difference? Fully loaded, it's about 19 litres per hundred. I reckon the best I've had is about 16 litres per hundred with the canopy off. And we are talking about the uh, tent. The top tent. Which is up there like a big brick. Yeah. Wind awning. resistance. Tray and canopy, like one of the biggest things I said to Luke at Outback Customs was just keep it flush with the line of the body. So that'll... That one gave the, you better fuel as well? Definitely. I mean, you see some of the um, dual cab cruisers or single cabs with factory trays or whatever, they're, they're an extra 200 mils wider mm. on either side and boxier, so they stick out quite a way. Yep. This was one of the big things I, I really wanted was to keep it flush with the body St lines. Streamline. What fuel do you get when you take the box off? It's about 16 litres per 100. All right, so you were saying 16 without it, yep. 19, 19 with, it. with it on. Yeah. Okay. About That's that. up there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The so 19 is. <laughs> yeah. Right, the tray and canopy combined mm. weigh less than 400 kilos. So really? dry, like without anything in it. Because this is steel, right? Yep, it's all steel. All steel. Yep. The whole lot. That's including the water tank, drawers, all of that. That's not too bad, eh? Not including the rooftop tent and awning and stuff like that, though. Mm. So the canopy itself is 400 kilos? With it loaded up with all of the drawers and fridge and slide and rooftop and all of that stuff, I'd say it would be around 400 kilos. Okay. I haven't weighed it. So when you do a lift off, you're 400 kilos lighter? Yeah. Cool. Which makes a huge difference. <laughs> that does make a huge difference. Yeah. It's like being loaded or unloaded. Exactly. So where can people ask you questions about your vehicle? Oh, Instagram is the best way to get in touch with me on 79 series on Instagram. I knew that, just wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's been an awesome platform for me, just communicating with people and getting ideas and, you know, meeting guys like yourself. I wouldn't have had that opportunity, I'm sure, if it wasn't, you know, for Instagram, I guess. So we're drinking Whistler wines at the moment. We, we did mention wines to start with, but um, you are the owner of Whistler wines? Yep. Well, I knew that as well, I just wanted him to say yes to it. <laughs> <laughs> so we were at your establishment the other day and it was pretty cool looking inside, all the barrels and stuff. So what got you into wine? I grew up in the industry, so my dad was a grape grower. I'm the fourth generation grape grower in my family, so it's in our blood, I guess, but mm. I'm the first one in my family to actually make wine as well. So I just love wine. So if you're in the Barossa Valley in South Australia, go check him out. I learned so much about wine the other day. It was ridiculous. So what are the top three mods on your cruiser? I think the biggest one would have to be the rear end setup. Obviously, they come as a blank canvas. If you're buying it new, it's a cab chassis and you can do what you want with it. So, you got a couple of levers. Yeah. You do have aircon. <laughs> yeah. And electric I motors. had to pay for the aircon though. Oh yeah, we all have to pay for the aircon we're buying, but there's no option to get them without. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. You can't get it without. It's oh, already right. in there, but they charge you for it. Yeah, right. Funny, <laughs> hey? Yeah. So, okay, so first mod is, favourite one is obviously the back. So what's the second one then? Lift, tyres. You know, okay. if you can throw that in together or that extra clearance from factory just allows you to get wherever you need to get. So, Worst part about the 79 series? from your point of view? It's probably the best and the worst thing, I guess. It, the simplicity of it, they're pretty basic. They're not overly comfortable, but they're rough and rugged and they'll go anywhere and mm. they're reliable. If you could not get a 79 series dual cab cruiser, what would you get? Very good question. <laughs> Don't ask me that one. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you can ask me that one, but you go first. Um, 
Look, I think um, Land Cruiser's the way to go, so probably a 200 series and probably a chop 200 with a tray and canopy on the back as well. Oh yeah, that's getting up there in, in the price. <laughs> yeah, but you know, this this is my hobby basically, yeah. so. Yep. And I love it. I don't spend money on much else, so yeah. Ask me. <laughs> What's your oh, other choice? I'll go an 80 series. 80? Yeah. I'll still have money in my pocket afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I reckon you'd go to town on it. I would go to town on it, <laughs> but I'd also go to town on a 200. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or a 105 actually, with an engine swap. What's the favourite wine you make? I know mine. <laughs> Grenache, what we're drinking at the moment, that's my favourite variety to play with in the Brasser, so probably this one, yeah. Yeah, this one, okay. Yeah. This would be a good wine on a hot day too, eh? Yeah, well, that's the thing, you can chuck it in the fridge and chill it down. The port we had last night, that was, that was epic. <laughs> epic. That's a limited edition too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, very limited. Cool. We haven't even released it yet, so we didn't, that Ooh, was a sneak preview. There you go, sneak preview. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even labelled it yet. No, no. Maybe an obvious question, but maybe not obvious to a lot of people. Why not yep. the license plate? Is that why not make a 79 series Land Cruiser? Yeah, well, everyone kept asking me, like, why am I building such a ridiculous car? Why and not? Why not was always my answer, and then I... I, I thought this car needed like a name basically, yeah. you know, that people would recognize it by, not just the standard number plate. So I started looking at what was available and punched in why not with W-I-N-E-N-O-T. It's and, pretty clever, I like it. Yeah, so kind of ties in the winery side of it and yeah. answers the question, why not? There is a third one too. Don't whinge. <laughs> Top trip. In the 79 series. Top trip would definitely be Fraser Island. Um, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I haven't been there. We recently went there in July this year and um, spent a week over on the island with Luke and Beck from Out Outback Customs as well. And that was just awesome. So relaxing, but some great adventures over there as well. Cheers for your hospitality for the last couple of days. And, no worries, mate. Good and, to have you. Yeah. Cheers for taking the vehicle out here and uh jack and farm yeah and uh if you would like to subscribe you can right here make sure you check out josh at 79 series on instagram follow this vehicle see where he's going check out his wines whistle wines as well uh, so subscribe support creation of content at patreon.com slash ronnie dale and here is another video of a 79 series dual cab cheers guys cheers cheers